This afternoon we are going to spend some time talking about uh, contemplating of mind. Contemplating of mind is uh, also very difficult uh, contemplation. Difficult uh, because it is so uh, subtle. Uh, it changes uh, much faster than anything else. And also we cannot uh, concentrate or contemplate on the mind alone. Because mind does not arise uh, by itself without anything in it. And because of this, uh, it is very difficult uh, kind of contemplation. Conscious, it is um, uh, consciousness that we are trying to contemplate, uh, consciousness with some contents in it. So, we have uh, eight pairs here given. They are uh, consciousness with greed, without greed, one pair. With hate, without hate, second pair. Third is with delusion, without delusion. Fourth is um, Uh, contracted mind and distracted mind. Fifth is uh, uh, exalted mind, unexalted mind. Then uh, sixth is uh, surpassable mind, unsurpassable mind. Seventh is concentrated mind, unconcentrated mind. Eighth is uh, liberated mind, unliberated mind. So we are, what we are looking at is not just mere consciousness, mind only. Although it is called contemplation of mind, we are we have uh, much more than mind or consciousness. Consciousness or the mind is uh, difficult to. Um, understand when Buddha exp was explaining uh, or defining ignorance uh, he uh, said ignorance is not knowing the five aggregates it is its arising its disappearance or the way leading to the disappearance or cessation of the aggregates. That means not knowing the Four Noble Truth in relation to the five aggregates is called ignorance. One of the aggregates is consciousness. And therefore, not knowing the arising of consciousness, not knowing the consciousness, not knowing the arising of consciousness, not knowing the end of consciousness, <laughs> not knowing the way leading to the end of consciousness is also called ignorance. That is why this is very difficult to understand. Now let us try to look at some other aspect in uh, making it difficult to understand. 
other difficulty is that uh, there is a possibility of uh, thinking that this consciousness is something going on and on and on and on permanently. Everything else changes, consciousness does not. Sometimes it is possible for people to think because uh, uh, all, uh, all the layers of consciousness can uh, disappear, but the core remains. And sometimes people even call a storehouse of consciousness. There is a storage of consciousness. It is there. So whenever you want, open the door and take some out of it. <laughs> so that is another difficulty, thinking that it is some kind of uh, entity that stays forever. And there was a monk in the time of the Buddha called Sati. You can see in uh, what he call, uh, I think, Alagadupama Sutta. Uh, yes, no, Mahatanna Sankhya Sutta. Mahatanna Sankhya Sutta. Uh, there is uh, an incident of uh, Sati, Bhikkhu Sati, who thought it is this consciousness that uh, goes from life to life. Because uh, he has heard that uh, Bodhisattva in his samsaric existence was born in many different lives as different individual, different beings and now he became Buddha. So he came to conclusion that uh, it was the same consciousness that went from life to life throughout the whole existence of samsara. And uh, many other bhikkhus uh, tried to persuade him not to uh, believe in that uh, what he called pernicious, pernicious view wrong view, uh, and then finally they brought him to the Buddha. And Buddha, uh, rebuking him, reprimanding him, gave him a very uh, enlightening explanation with regard to how consciousness arises, what consciousness is. Consciousness uh, uh, arises uh, dependent upon senses. Therefore, they are, consciousness has different names according to the sense through which the consciousness arises. For instance, when consciousness arises through the eyes, it is called eye consciousness. When it arises through the nose, nose consciousness, ear consciousness, tongue consciousness, body consciousness, and mind consciousness, oh by, by the way. And therefore, even for the mind, there is a base, the door, through which consciousness arises. When the senses and sensory objects come in contact, consciousness arises. Otherwise, there is no one single place where consciousness is stored. Mind consciousness arises uh, from the mind door. Mind door is what is called uh, 
life continuum, which is called in Abhidhamma term Bhavanga, that is the re that consciousness has three names in according to Abhidhamma teaching. One is uh, uh, relinking consciousness, other is uh, life continuum consciousness, and other is death consciousness. There are there are, there are Pali terms for this. Uh, Patisandhi chitta, bhavanga chitta, chuti chitta. Patisandhi is uh, the consciousness that uh, initiates this consciousness or initial moment of consciousness that arises at the moment of conception. And uh, then consciousness uh, uh, continues to uh, rise, rises, falls and uh, renews itself again and again and again within itself. That is called life continuum consciousness, bhavanga. Bhavanga means the, the link between one life and another. Anga means a limb or link. Bhava means uh, becoming, a link of becoming. That means one life links with another life. That link is called Bhavanga. And then uh, sometimes uh, uh, relinking consciousness also in some places uh, is termed as uh, uh, Gandhabha. Uh, that is a special name, but it is not a being or some kind of person or being, but uh, the, the force, conscious uh, force that uh, generates new consciousness at the moment of conception. Therefore, it is called Gandhabha. And this is the word, uh, uh, the na name that the Buddha used in the Mahanidana Sutta. Anyway, when uh, the consciousness uh, departs or separates from this life, and uh, we call our, that is death, that moment is called uh, Chuti. And then again, relinking consciousness arises. Now, perhaps you may ask a question during question time, then we get, get into more uh, detail and uh, discussion about it. But for now, uh, these are the three names uh, given to uh, three stages of consciousness. Then, uh, there are so, so we have now uh, nine types of consciousness. One, uh, uh, six are uh, named by six senses: eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, and the other three are uh, relinking consciousness life continuum consciousness and death consciousness that is chuti chitta that is departing consciousness and this is the, the departing consciousness and relinking consciousness of course also is the uh, most difficult part to understand so that is why because sati or sati uh, got confused thinking that it is the same consciousness that goes from life to life. Anyway, 
this leads to another uh, area of uh, discussion that is uh, Buddha said that this consciousness chitta is uh, luminous but because of adventitious external uh, influ conditions it becomes polluted defiled an ordinary person who is not well versed in the Dhamma does not understand this therefore an ordinary person does not practice or cultivate concentration meditation chitta bhavana you can see that uh, statement in Anguttara Nikaya one who knows this will develop cultivate chitta bhavana concentration meditation concentration meditation is a way of cleansing the mind once the mind is cleansed that mind can become wise and that uh, cleanse, uh, making an attempt trying to practice uh, meditation after cleansing the mind of impurities to develop insight, wisdom is called Panya Bhavana. Chitta Bhavana, Panya Bhavana, that is cultivation of wisdom. And these two are called Samatha Vipassana. Now we come to our part in the book. So, this consciousness, as I said, does not arise by itself. Whenever consciousness arises, it arises with something in it. So, it arises sometimes with lust. Lust, then the meditator would know, should know, now the mind is full of lust. Now this is lustful mind. The word used in Pali is raga. Sa raga chittang, sa raga chittanti pajanati, sa raga. Raga uh, means uh, gluing, mind glues to something holds on to something. Uh, attached to something. When we are in meditation, all of a sudden, something triggers in our mind. Either through eyes, as this is why we have, I mentioned this way how consciousness arises. We got to remember. Through the eyes, consciousness arises with lust. That means, remembering lustful object. Consciousness can arise with that lust in the mind. This is not something unusual. People have had lustful moment in their life through the eyes. That means by seeing objects which arouse their lust, lust had been arisen in their mind many, 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 many millions of times in their life. From that memory, when they sit to meditate, because of that memory, all of a sudden that incident, that person, that situation, that appears in the mind. Then well, the meditator must recognize it. This is lustful mind. This mind now is colored with lust. At that time, in this particular section, 
there is no any method given to overcome that. What the meditator is supposed to do here is just pay attention, simple, direct, undivided, mindful attention to that state of mind. Recognize it. Don't, don't go into any further detail, but just recognize, pay total attention to it, just like you isolating it uh, like an object in the blue sky. Nothing else there. Just isolate, single it out, and pay attention to that particular state of mind. And then it is possible because of our intention, our, our wholesome desire, wholesome wish to cultivate insight. We are very serious, very diligent, very honest when we come to meditation. We want to cleanse the mind. We know that this mind can be cleaned. This particular uh, psychic irritant, this lustful thought came through my eyes. It arose in my eyes, in my mind, through the eyes, through the memory of the object that I have seen in the past. Otherwise, this mind, when I was sitting, focusing my mind on the breathing, it was neat. It was luminous, clean. All of a sudden, this memory occurred. Greed or lustful thought arose in my mind. Now, let me focus my mind on this. So, because of the sincerity, honesty, uh, intention to cultivate the mind and return to that clear, pure state, uh, which of course not 100% pure, but uh, before that arose, mind was relatively good. Let me return to that. That is the intention. With that intention, we simply pay attention to that mind, to the greedy state, or lustful state. And luckily, perhaps, it is possible, if you are lucky, <laughs> that will fade away. That particular state of mind fades away. Perhaps it may take some time, depending on the person's temperament, person's state of mind, person's spiritual development, person's perfections, paramis, depending on all these things, that person and the person's intention, seriousness and all this, that will fade away. Then he will realize lust free mind. Viraga, the word viraga is used for nibbana. Tannakayo virago nirodo nibbana is the description of nibbana. When we describe, when the Buddha described nibbana in, uh, in uh, Udana, uh, in other places as well, the epithet he used to describe Nibbana is Viraga. To describe the Buddha's mind also is called Viraga. Uh, Arahant's mind is called Viraga, Viraga mind. Uh, so, that is the permanent viraga. That means the state where lust would not arise at all, completely free from lust. But here, in your meditation, in your sitting on the cushion, when the lust arises, you know, if there is no uh, potential in the mind, lust can never arise. Although the mind is luminous, it doesn't mean that it is totally pure. 
there is still is possibility of arising lust. That is why it arose in the mind while you are in meditation. But when we talk about the Buddha and Arahants, this, this doesn't refer to them because lust would never arise in their mind anyway. This refers to an average ordinary person whose mind is luminous and yet there is a potentiality of becoming pollute, polluted and therefore lust arose. So the meditator can see the possibility of liberating mind from lust. When you pay mindful attention, the lust fades away. When it fades away, the mindful meditator realizes, gee, it is wonderful. This mind was full of lust before, now it is liberated, free. That means even I have a chance of liberating this mind from lust. With that confidence, the person can proceed when one sees when the lust fades away from the mind. Then, another time, not at the same time, don't think that these things happen in this order. First lust arises and then it goes away, hatred arises. No, not in this order. There is no particular order for these things to arise. Another time you are sitting medita in meditation, everything is going on very smoothly, all of a sudden, because of the same reasons, same way, through, our, through your eyes, you have seen an object, or you have, with your ears, you have heard a sound, and so forth. From that previous memory, uh, or something that happened to you. And from that memory, while you are in meditation, <coughs> hatred can arise. You know, lust can arise not only sitting on the cushion. While walking meditation, you can, you can experience it. While lying down, you can have, you, that may arise. While uh, standing, it can arise. In any posture, these things can arise. So, hateful thought arises in any of the four postures or any of the other activities. Remember in the clear comprehension, we mentioned many, many, many activities going forward, going backward, bending, standing, uh, wearing clothes, going to bathrooms and eating, drinking, sleeping, you know, uh, even observing silence. At any moment, any time, Every, and every you know moment, waking moment, this thing can arise. That is where, at that point, when it arises, we rec we recognize ah. Now, hate arose in me. Don't think that these things arise only when you are sitting on the cushion. <laughs> then it is very easy but it arises any time. So, head arises also depending on what, uh, depending on previous experiences, some conditions, some factors has happened in the past or happening now. While we are meditating, while we are walking, talking and so forth, all of a sudden something can trigger right that moment for the head to arise. It does not have to be a memory of the past. It can be that instant, instant you are, you are engaged in certain thing, certain conversation, uh, certain activity, does not, I mean there is no prediction. You cannot predict hate will arise at such and such a time or lust will arise at such and such a time. There is no prediction. Any time it can arise. As soon as it arose, you recognized now this consciousness before this moment was not uh, afflicted or obsessed with hatred. Now all of a sudden, hatred arose in this mind. 
since there is no any particular uh, technique to get rid of the technique given in the discourse, at that time according to this discourse, this section, since we are practicing pure mindfulness, pay mindful attention to hatred and see the impact of hatred. Keep paying attention. Don't think of any object, any incident, any situation, anything. Don't bring anything into the mind. Just pay attention to hatred. Sado sankirtan, sado sankirtan pajanati. The mind full of hatred. Don't say mindful of hatred, mindful of hatred, mindful of hatred, mindful of hatred. But don't say that. It's not going to work. Just pay attention to it. When you say words, you can trick the mind, you can deceive the mind, and you can get away with it. But if you pay total attention, you can go you can uh, penetrate, you can delve right to the bottom of the problem without using any words, concepts, ideas, details. Just keep it. It is quicker way of uh, getting rid of that state of mind. And when that disappears, then arises, it is slowly, it, it bound to disappear. It bound to disappear because you know previously, before it arose, the mind did not have hatred. Now it arose. So there is a possibility of freeing it from hatred. So when you pay attention, it goes away and then arises hate free mind. What is hate free mind is such a beautiful, relaxed, peaceful, loving, friendly thought. Metta. Hate free mind means mind full of metta. That arises. You don't have, all of a sudden you feel friendliness. No particular object, no particular person. You are filled with metta. Then recognize it. Feel it. Delve in it. Accept it. Be with it. And experience that feeling, that metta thought. Then know that the mind is full of metta, no more hatred. Then, deluded mind, samohankirtan, samohankirtan, pajanati. This is another difficult point. You know, you something has to be uh, mind has to be. Uh, clean to understand what is happening. If the mind is cluttered, confusion, uh, uh, delusion is, uh, you are bewildered, confused. At that moment, how do you know that the mind is deluded? <laughs> because uh, mind has to be uh, free from delusion to understand delusion. When it is deluded, <laughs> how do you know that you are deluded? Because this is why it is very important to understand, that is why we always must remember this statement, this mind is luminous, it becomes uh, polluted by adventitious defilements. From that, before that moment of delusion, you were, your mind was clear. 
you remember your mind was clear, uh, all of a sudden you get in, got into delusion. That is, uh, that is understandable, that is not something difficult, because you have been with the clear state of mind before. Now all of a sudden, mind became deluded. Just like when you fall asleep, you know, before you fall asleep, you are awake. When a sleepiness arises, you know that you are going to fall asleep. When you come out of sleep, you know that you are out of sleep before you are sleepy. Similarly, that is why this uh, delusion is uh, compared to sleepiness. In uh, five hindrances, when we discuss hindrances, remember when you are uh, full of uh, uh, confusion, delusion, you are just like in a prison or in a sleepy state. No, you are sloth and, sloth and torpor. It's just like in, sleep, in a prison. So, before you go to prison, you know that you are free. Similarly, when uh, uh, sloth and torpor arises, you know that uh, it is sloth and torpor. Exactly like that, when uh, confusion arises, you know before confusion arose, your mind was clear. When it arose, you know, I am getting confused. You know that. So, confusion can arise, may not necessarily be uh, from all the mental, all the sense, through all the senses, but the mind door sense. Confusion especially refers to a confused uh, uh, view or wrong view with regard to personality or self. Notion of self can take grip of your mind, then you will be deluded. What you have to do to get out of that? You got to break through that delusion. In order to break through that delusion, you just watch the delusion and then slowly it clears up. How it clears up? Because even the delusion is not permanent. In, in this whole practice, we are looking at impermanence. Before the mind became deluded, it was clear. Now it is deluded and you, when you pay attention, it, the cloud of delusion slowly fades away and clear blue sky will appear again. So, impermanence is the key when you pay attention to experiences, you can see that experience is changing, disappearing. Just like greed, hatred disappeared because they are not permanent. Now again, when the delusion arises, you pay attention to it, knowing that it is delusion, and then it slowly fades away. Then you know undeluded mind as undeluded mind. Amoha also is another name for attaining uh, enlightenment. Uh, the Buddha's Arahant's mind is described as uh, Amoha, undeluded, unconfused mind. But here, the meditators, ordinary meditators, will have a temporary uh, clarity, freedom from delusion. It is not permanent, but that is what eventually we have to make permanent. Then, 
uh, contracted mind as contracted mind. Contracted mind means sinking mind. Uh, when we are in meditation, you uh, you are withdrawn. Uh, you are sort of depressed. Uh, you experience that. Many meditators, you know, go through that. That that state. Not only in sitting on the cushion, but any time in the daytime, any waking moment, this also can arise. That is, uh, mind can be, you feel depressed. You feel nobody in the world loves you. <laughs> Nothing seems to work for you. Everything you are lonely. And this kind of feeling, this kind of thought can arise. Then watch, watch that thought, pay attention to it. Keep watching, 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 don't rationalize it. When a shrunken mind arises, sometimes people can uh, rationalize it. Well, nobody wants me because I am so and so, uh, I said such and such, I did such and such, so forth and so on. You rationalize and justify it and hold on to it. When the mind is shrunken, don't do that, just pay attention to it. It is impermanent state, just like others, other mental state. Then it slowly fades away then mind becomes expanded. Then you will see the whole universe open to you, whole world open to you. The whole world wants you. You feel you are someone. That kind of state of mind. Oh, open, mind, is, mind becomes so uh, universal. There is no boundary. You feel like that. That is called uh, expanded or uh, uh, what do you call uh, yes, distracted, exalted, no, uh, contracted, ah, no, the ne next is distracted. Uh, contracted is uh, shrunken and the opposite also is distracted. That is uh, monkey mind. <coughs> mind is all over through various uh, senses and sensory experiences, memories and so forth. You go on thinking uh, uh, of various things. Now, uh, That is Vikhita Chitta. Other one is Mahagata Chitta. Mahagata is the exalted one, exalted mind. Mahagata um, is used especially in Abhidhamma for attaining uh, uh, jhana. Mahagata Chitta in Abhidhamma terms. Uh, means uh, uh, jhanic state of mind. Here there is another state where we come across that, but here exalted mind means gone beyond ordinary normal state of mind. That means you feel either uh, calm, peaceful, tranquil, and you are uplifted, uh, your body is light, you feel the whole, you, are, you feel that you are a few feet above the ground. This happens only when you are sitting in meditation. This will not happen uh, any other time. Also we must remember all these things will not happen all the time. Some of them will happen in some times, some other times they may not happen. 
this particular state of exalted mind will arise when the mind is calm, body is calm, relaxed, sitting in one place. And we must remember uh, we got to be mindful of the state of mind when it arises, where it arises. Uh, we do not expect them to arise uh, in any uh, particular uh, place. Then unexalted mind, then you will see that your mind is not anything particular. It is just normal, ordinary, simple state of mind and you become aware of it. Then next is sa-uttarang, uh, sa-passable, uh, anuttarang, unsa-passable. Sa-uttarang means there is a higher state to attain, but you have not attained that. Anuttara means there is no higher state to have attained the higher state of mind. Anuttara is also used for the Buddha's attainment of enlightenment. Anuttarang samma sambo sa, anuttarang samma sambo din abhisambuddho ti pachanyasin dhamma chakra pavatana sutta. Buddha said the uh, uh, Yavakivanyatoha Bhikkave he had, had declared to the world that his mind attained this unsurpassable state. A meditator can experience, can, can have this kind of experience. That is temporary experience, but still a wonderful, almost like supramundane experience. It is not supramundane yet. Uh, So become mindful of that. Then concentrated mind as concentrated mind, unconcentrated mind as unconcentrated mind. Sometimes people, uh, uh, when they have uh, distracted mind, they always complain, my mind is distracted, I do not gain concentration. Here Buddha recommends, when the mind is not concentrated, be mindful of that unconcentrated state of mind. Do not worry about it. Do not complain that the mind is not concentrated, but just become mindful. You are trying to practice mindfulness. When you practice mindfulness, if the mind is not concentrated, just pay attention to that unconcentrated state of mind. Then probably you will gain concentration. If you start using, if, if you start complaining, you know, grumbling, uh, worrying, thinking about unconcentrated state of mind, you will not gain concentration. And this is very good advice. Just uh, remember this, this statement. <clears throat> then, when mind is concentrated, be happy with that. Concentrated mind as concentrated mind, unconcentrated mind as unconcentrated mind. Then, finally, liberated mind as liberated mind, unliberated mind as unliberated mind. Now, here liberated means it is liberated from all greed, hatred, delusion, distraction, uh, 
shrunken state, unconcentrated state and so forth and so on. All these from negative things mind is liberated. You feel that you come to a state where none of these negative things is present. No greed, no hatred and so forth. And yet it may be temporary. If you follow the steps of uh, mindfulness very closely, this even can be the full attainment of enlightenment. provided you followed the steps earlier, then you will realize the mind is totally liberated. If it is not liberated, you will see other things appear in the mind. However, temporarily you experience the liberation of mind from psychic returns for a certain period of time to experience it. Now, what we discussed here is the, the states of mind that uh, you experience during your meditation, your mindfulness training. Uh, this shows that the, constant, that the consciousness you cannot watch itself. Here although it is mentioned contemplation of mind, what we are, what we are doing here is uh, becoming mindful of the various things that happens to the mind, not the mind itself. Because mind itself you weak, mind itself cannot be watched, cannot do anything by itself. mind has to have something in it uh, to do something. It has to be the greed, hatred, delusion, non-greed, non-hatred, non-delusion so forth and so on. Non-greed is a thought, non-hatred is a thought, non-delusion is a thought, distraction is a thought. Contraction is a thought, concentration is a thought, non-concentration is a thought. You see, ekagata, there are 25 wholesome mental states listed in the Abhidhamma, 25. Among these 25, you find these wholesome things. On the unwholesome, 14 unwholesome thoughts are mentioned. And these unwholesome things you can find in that list. Greed, hatred, delusion, distraction, contraction and so forth. So all these are mental states or thoughts. And therefore whenever we watch the mind, what we really watch are these mental states or thoughts uh, affecting the mind obsessing the mind or my becoming uh, mind becoming free from these obsessions. When mind becomes free from these obsessions, mind is not totally free without anything. When it is free from greed, it has the thought of non-greed. When it is free from distraction, it is it has the thought of uh, concentration. When it is liberated from uh, unconcentrated state of mind, it is full of concentration. So, concentration is a thought. Unconcentration is a thought, a mental state. So, what we are doing here is focusing mind on numerous mental states, not pure consciousness. Sometimes people we talk about, uh, I want to experience pure consciousness. 
you never experience pure consciousness. Only when you attain Nibbana, then all these mental states will disappear. Even as an Arahant, so long as you live as an Arahant, you will have mental states, wholesome mental states in the mind. Only when you attain Nibbana, all this will cease. Now friends, this may be enough as Dhamma talk for this afternoon. And uh, the section is short, but you see how much uh, you can uh, learn from these sh short sections. <coughs>